Hello, and welcome to an About to Eat q and I'm Andrew, I'm here with Inka. Hello. Recently on our Instagram and YouTube, we asked for your questions for us to answer. Chatting about food is one of our favorite things to do, so that's what we're doing today. First question. Show us your morning coffee routines. Mm. This is by JK from YouTube. Perfect place to start, because then we'll get to drink coffee through mm. the rest of this. This is true. You go first. Okay, so for me, I don't have any like fancy coffee equipment at home. I usually just have my mocha pot, which actually was recommended to me by my mom, just because she likes doing that a lot. I think she went to Italy and her friends were like, oh, you should get this. And so she was like, you should get this. So that's kind of what I do. I don't have a grinder at home. The only grinder I have is this really small one. Manual, so. Oh, hand crank? Yes. I used to do that. Oh my gosh. This is a pain. Too, too much. So I usually buy it from the cafes I go to and I tell them that, hey, can you grind this for me for a mocha pot? Super easy, I just put that into the pot, pouring in some hot water because then shortens the time it needs over the stove top. And then once the coffee comes out, that's when I take it off the stove top. I like to just pour it over some ice and some Barista Edition oat milk because it's a little creamier or whole milk. That's about it, super quick and easy, just an oat milk latte. Drink it throughout the day. Here we are. Thanks. Cheers. I like it. You like That's it? That's nice, yeah. Okay, nice. But I guess we'll do yours in a bit because we have to finish this yeah. first. We'll drink these and then we'll get to mine. Next question. What are some pantry slash fridge staples you pick up every week? That's from VH920 on Instagram. Oh, every week. Every week makes it interesting because yes. I have plenty of pantry and fridge staples, but ones that I need to replenish every week. Egg, probably. Eggs. It's probably number one. It's a big one. I feel like garlic, onions, and butter yeah. for me. Yes. You can burn through them pretty quick mm -hmm. if you cook every day. Pasta could just be garlic and oil. Mm, this is true. And most things I cook have garlic in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or like a marinade. Sometimes I just like puree a bunch of it. Yeah. Honestly, pasta. Just like some Ooh. dried noodle in the pantry. Okay. I think I just have so much pasta that I don't need to buy it every week. I eat so much pasta. I need to buy <laughs> okay. it every week. Okay. That makes sense. The next question. Best type of bread by Nike Tuyen from Instagram. Best type of bread is a baguette. I think I wouldn't disagree with you. <gasps> you know, for a single bite of bread, baguette probably takes the cake. You just don't like it as a sandwich bread. No, I like to like tear it and like break it and like smear butter and put, I, you know, I like jelly on it too, mm. but it's separately. Are there any other great brands? I mean, there's lots of great there's bread. There's a lot of good bread. I mean, just to give a different answer from you, focaccia, because Ooh. It's like pre-saturated in oil. That's it's true. ready to go. You don't have to do anything to yes. it. It's basically naked pizza. Ooh, oh, I like that description actually. Okay, next one. Tips about food content creating. That's from Crumbly on IG. If you're actively creating content around food that involves cooking, you need at least double the time the recipe says you need. At if, least, yeah. At least, if you're going to film it. And then you might mess it up. In which case, just start over the next day. My tip is make things that you are personally, genuinely excited about, mm -hmm. and that will help you make every aspect of the content better. Because if you're just trying to make something that's, you know, something maybe you saw it somewhere else, maybe you're trying to emulate something, you might not have the enthusiasm to give every aspect the attention it deserves. And for sure, I think that passion, that genuine passion comes through. Next question, where is Adam by any massage from Instagram? Adam is right there. Yeah, Adam's actually directing this video. He's calling out the questions <laughs> as we go along. Favorite dish from Hong Kong? And this comes from Angel Lamb on YouTube. Ooh, favorite dish from Hong Kong? I've never been, so you'll have to <gasps> You've take You've never it. been? Never been. Gosh. I'd love to go. Why is worth it not in Hong Kong? One is just Cantonese barbecue. So like mm. barbecue pork. Have you had Cantonese barbecue? Like barbecue pork? I think I have, <gasps> but not, not an intimate knowledge. Oh my God, so good. First thing I go and eat when I get off the plane. Second thing is fishball noodles or mm. wonton noodles. Just like, you know, soup noodles. First two things on my list that I want to eat. Are those choices weather dependent? on when you arrive? <laughs> Good question. No, they are all year round, okay. all year round. Okay. I just want them all the time. Next question. What do you like to make for dinner when you don't actually want to cook by piece of Keiko from Instagram? 
That's a good question. And for me, not wanting to cook has like a couple different mm. levels to it. It's okay. like, am I cooking dinner or am I not turning on the stove at all? That's like two different things. Mm. If it's like, oh, I'm not cooking a meal, but I'm maybe I'm heating something up, it's probably like eggs. Mm -hmm. I even consider the amount of involvement that goes into making like a quick fried rice is even like, mm. I consider that like almost not cooking. I agree. I was going to say fried rice too. It was just like the most simple version. It's almost like things I don't need to think. I consider not cooking in a sense, just like really quick. And then if I'm not turning on a stove or doing anything, I just make like a walking buffet out of my kitchen. I like open the fridge and I have like two tablespoons of yogurt and then I open the drawer and maybe there's a fruit there and I shove that in my mouth and I go to the pantry and there's a handful of nuts. And before you know it, I'm like, I could be done eating now. I also just like a good ramen, like instant ramen. But what I do like to do is kind of like to jazz it up, you know, like I like to just add some broth in there or some more toppings. You know what I really like to make when I don't want to cook? It's that sandwich from Strong Opinions. The okay. one that you were like, that's a charcuterie board <laughs> in bread. I mean, if you had the things available in your refrigerator, <laughs> fair play. But it seems like there needs to be some premeditation to have all of those elements available. Okay, that's fair, that's yeah. fair. Hello, what do you do with all the dishes you create in How I Cook X Pounds of X? And that's from Margaret Wanjuhi on YouTube. Sorry if I mispronounced her name. What do I do with all the dishes? A lot of freezing takes place, a lot of sharing with friends takes place, and also a lot of eating things at times of day when I normally wouldn't eat them. So a lot of the times if I'm in the process of filming those, breakfast consists of a lot of dinner foods. I'm trying to think of an example, but it's like French onion soup for breakfast. Hey, if it's already <laughs> cooked, that's what I'm having. It's a lot of eating, to be honest. I would say this is true for a lot of our videos. The truth also is that I'm usually cooking that stuff over a pretty long period of time, you know, a couple of weeks. So it's not like I've made four different things in one day and then suddenly I have 20 pounds of food, you know? What is a cookbook you highly recommend by Horse Crazies 18 from YouTube? <laughs> nice name. I highly recommend this cookbook called Mamushka by Olya Hercules. Mm. It is a Ukrainian cookbook. It was one of the first cookbooks that I saw that had this detailed overview of Ukrainian food. It's also very personal. It's very beautiful. It has a great cover. I like it a lot. I'm like torn between a couple, but I feel like the best illustration of it would be Meng Shi's cookbook that I use for Korean foods for 24 hours just because it was so straightforward and I felt like I got a taste of what I could have if I flew halfway over the world and it was such a delight to be able to recreate so many things that were so delicious. And it's just, I really like visuals mm. too. It had a lot of visuals and I like that she like attached like little stories to it. So mm. I really enjoyed that book. I think it's a great sort of like beginner recipe book to get. Have you ever thought about starting a garden? If so, what vegetables would we see? And that's from Gao on IG. Does it have to be vegetables? Because <laughs> What else would it be? <laughs> so this is what, actually what I am going to plant. I just got like a mm -hmm. little indoor garden thing. And definitely I want like sweet basil and Thai basil and I want edible flowers. Yeah, those are good ones. I would grow tomatoes and fresh herbs. Tomatoes off the vine, I think are one of the most delicious things. It's also like very difficult to, I mean, it's not very difficult, but it is unique to buying a tomato that's been like sitting around for a little bit. And then also I think fresh herbs just have so much more mm. potency to them. I've noticed this thing very frequently in restaurants that herbs seem to be, it seems to have so much more fragrance mm -hmm. and potency than the stuff you find in stores. And I think that's just like the freshness of how uh, recently they've been picked. And it's also like the tender young mm -hmm. ends of herbs that you that are really desirable for that kind of thing. That also, if you had a garden, you'd have access to. In my head, three rules of like what to plant. One is they go bad easily. Mm. Two is you use them a lot. And three is they're hard to find. Mm -hmm. Question, is there a food item you used to hate but love now? By Dasimat Dabe on Instagram. For me, it's lotus root. 
Mm. Which is an interesting thing because I think as a child I only had it in soups in like these big chunks and there was no flavor. And they're great for me, right? But I feel like as I grow older, there's like so many, I learned about so many ways to make it. You could like have it with like chili oil, you could have it cold, you could have it served in so many ways. And now I like really enjoy the texture. Like if you like cucumber, mm. right? It's like that crunchy, refreshing texture. And now I kind of like really like it. Whereas I used yeah. to just like did not want to eat it at all. I am now recalling what my real answer is. And it's eggplant. I used to, I think this is true for like lots of people, yes. but like I used to not vibe with eggplant mm. whatsoever. Mushy, not very flavorful, and now it's one of my favorite things. Yeah, I yeah. like really look forward to eating eggplant in the summer. I agree. I think that was my second thing. There's just like, I feel like a whole list of vegetables that maybe we didn't like as yeah. a kid, and now we're like, oh, it's fantastic. Oh, I might also be cooking some eggplant in oh, the near future. 20 pounds? Maybe more. Maybe <laughs> In the recent video, the format changed. I love the older one when you talk to the others. That's from Adharsh Kanan on Instagram. So this must be a reference to the recent soy sauce tell us what you made video where we compiled all of our recipes together without doing the normal discussion thing. And we did that because logistically, sometimes it's difficult to get everybody in the same place. And yeah, it's definitely our preference to get together and have those discussions, which we got back to in the recent ketchup episode. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, yeah, I actually yeah, have the soy sauce. I keep on bringing it and then we never have it. If there's a time to do it. Okay, right I'm gonna now. get it. I have them here. <laughs> See, I put them into these little jars and Adam also got his croissants. So here's a spoon for you. You made these in New York and you just decided to bring them. Yes, and it's caramel, so it lasts for a while. So this is the soy sauce caramel that I made in our Tell Us What You Made soy sauce video, the one where I enjoyed this over some mochi. Oh, wow. Right out the jar, honestly. I'm just gonna try it right off the spoon to begin. Mmm. What do you like? No, yeah, that's, all, that's all you. <laughs> it's good. It's so funny to see something in a video that I had no expectation of ever getting to try and then suddenly here it is. <laughs> I know, I'm it's so really happy. Good. Unfortunately, it's usually too difficult to logistically get everyone mm -hmm. in the same place. And then on top of that, at the same time that the food would be made. It would be very fun and maybe we'll get to it someday. But... The hope is that one day we'll be able to get to yeah. do it. It'll be super, super fun. What are the restaurants that you've gone back to the most after eating there for a video by True Crime from Instagram? It's a great question. My immediate choice is Double Chicken Please, which we covered mm. for the Unique Takeout series. They have like that fried chicken sandwich and to-go cocktail set. Do you have a go-to cocktail there? I do. It's the Japanese cold noodle salad. Go-to cocktail. No, it, it, that's the drink. Oh wait, what? It's a cold noodle drink. It's a not cold... noodles. It's a cold, it's a drink inspired by cold noodles. And wow. it is fantastic. Let me tell you, it will blow your mind. It is very good. Numerically, it's probably Proof Bakery from Worth It Cake, but it's probably also Ototo mm. from the Sushi and Burger video. Yeah, I go there quite frequently. They change up their menu mm. so often that it's always exciting to go yes. back and try new stuff. Yeah. Also, thank you to Andrew for bringing me to Proof Bakery last time. It was the first time I had it and it yeah. was fantastic. That's because you were like, LA doesn't have any good baked goods. And then I was like, we're going to Proof Bakery, and then we're going to pick up this Bub and Grandma's baguette. I know, and which... he proved me wrong. Question is, we need new travel videos by at underscore the underscore explosions from Instagram. Yeah. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Could you share any rice cooker recipes? And this is from Nikoru Kyle at Instagram. The only thing that I do on a semi-regular basis is when the rice is like 90% done, I take a salmon filet and I slice it like half an inch to a quarter inch thick and I lay it on top and I let it just steam briefly, mm. along with like some aromatics and seasoning in there. For me, the first one that comes to mind that is a go-to when I don't really have time to cook is I think rice, you soak it for 30 minutes or so, and then I just dump in whatever vegetables I have mm. in the fridge and then pour in stock instead of water. Mm. So then you get all that flavor and then, you know, you can add protein if you want, but like only something that can be in high pressure 
heat for a while and it just comes out as like, it's not quite fried rice, you know, it's, like, it's not a risotto. Mm. What is it? It's just like a, what do you? It's almost like a, a pilaf. Yes. Or like paella adjacent in that Ish. neighborhood of yes. like seasoned and f filled rice. Yes, it's great for like cold winter seasons mm -hmm. when you just want something warm and comforting and like nutritious. So that is probably my go-to. Sean also has a great rice cooker recipe. He made some fried chicken rice with leftover fried chicken. That is very good. So check that out. I'm moving apartment and don't have any kitchen things except one pot and some cutlery. What are your recommended essentials on a budget? Love the channel, heart emoji, thanks. That's M on YouTube. On a budget obviously makes everything a little bit more difficult, but I think when it comes to kitchen stuff, you should really consider buying things that are basically indestructible and will last forever. Mm -hmm. A cast iron skillet is pretty inexpensive and you can basically use forever and you can cook a lot of things in it. If you have a little bit more budget, I think a great stainless steel pan could basically be used for everything and can last essentially your entire life. And so if you pick like a saute pan or like one of those more generously bold skillets, kind of like what I was talking about in the was this pan a mistake video, that can probably do like 90% of the cooking jobs in a kitchen. And I think it's just a good knife. Like if you have a good knife, it's easy to like chop a lot of things, you know? I feel like that's the most essential to me. I agree. I would add on to that, the next best thing is to get a good cutting board that is not gonna be annoying to use. Cause I find that that is usually the most frustrating part about cooking. And cooking only gets easier when you have stuff that you're comfortable mm -hmm. using. I feel like it also just like, it, it's based off of what you eat. Right. If you love garlic, invest in a garlic press. If you love coffee, invest in a mocha pot. Like I feel like these are all like relatively mm -hmm. inexpensive things that will really help you with what you like to eat. What you like to drink, the thing I would need the most is like a whisk, because I love whisking things. And like having a whisk saves my life in a lot of situations. Just thought of one more. You're moving to an apartment, it might be small, but find space for a big mixing bowl. Mm. And this is actually something that I don't have and have been searching for for a while. But a lot of times when you need to mix something, you kind of need the bowl to be like twice the volume of the thing. And I think it's like, that's why I hate making salad so much is because I don't have a bowl appropriately sized for making the salad. I have bowls that are appropriately sized for serving the salads that are the right size that I should be making, but it's separate from a nicely sized mixing bowl. And a good tip is getting it from a kitchen supply store. Also, a lot of the like premium cookware brands have a list that you could sign up for. And then a few times a year, they do like their factory seconds mm. sale where it will be like basically the same as the real thing, but it has like a tiny blemish. And they're like, we technically can't sell this for retail price, and you get it for a third of the cost. And that's another great thing to look out for. Ready for another cup of coffee? Yes, sir. All right, I'll take you through my morning routine. I usually make coffee in a Chemex. So this starts with me grinding some whole beans in my coffee grinder. And then invariably, when I take the little cup out of the grinder, it gets grounds everywhere. So I actually have this little countertop vacuum that helps make that easier. Those grounds then go into the Chemex filter on top of the Chemex. I don't bother rinsing the filter. That's a thing that people commonly do, but I'm usually too tired and I'm like, why? this is taking too long. I want the coffee already. You bloom it for about a minute, which is where you just put in twice the weight of the coffee of water and you let that sit for a second. And then you pour over and it usually takes like three times to do a full brew of my amount of coffee, which is like 33 grams. And that's it. I pour it into my favorite mug, which right now is this Heath Ceramics Sunflower Yellow mug. Fun fact, this was a recalled color because they found out that some of them were cracking. And so they asked me to send it back. But you said no. And I was like, mine's doing fine. And I love this color too much. Aww. Actually had another question about this mug in particular, which one of you noticed in the last Worth It season. Where are the mugs at the end of the last Worth It episodes from? And that question comes from Cupido Animation on Instagram. That's this mug. So this is Adam's personal mug, which he got from a place called Bex Ceramics, BX Ceramics. Favorite boba tea drink, bubble tea emoji, by actually dot its 
dot Ira dot Mabai <laughs> from Instagram. I don't have one. You don't drink boba? Not really, sorry. Cancel it. <laughs> Cancel it. Wow, didn't we have boba in Taiwan? Yeah, but I don't have a favorite. Milk tea, fruit tea, do you have a preference? I can't say that I do. I mean, I like it. I just don't, I don't have a strong uh, preference. I like fruity, generally. Whether it's like grapefruit green tea or like a lemon with like IU jelly and boba. Just something very refreshing, usually. But then, that's like summer. It's seasonal. Okay, this is a bit controversial, but like, it's not controversial. Cold weather, I like just hot boba. There's hot boba? There's hot boba. Just like, you know, know, just like hot, hot milk tea with boba. Like, this is like so scandalous when I said this at first time. People are like, what? It's great. Because you know why? The boba stays that chewy Q texture that you want it to have versus mm. like when it meets ice, right? It's starch, so then it hardens and then it becomes mm. not as enjoyable. But when it's hot, texture stays the same. It's amazing. Maybe I should try some hot boba. Yes. We'll convert you, Andrew. Does your passion for food and food interests affect your personal relationships? How do you relate to your friends' or family's taste and choice of food? That's from Navya Srivastava on YouTube. This is a very specific question. This brings to mind one of the recent times that we all ate together and Sean, we were at a pizza place and Sean was like, maybe their pasta is good too. And you flat out said no. <laughs> you said, that's not what we're doing right now. Leave that alone. Okay, in my defense, it was a pizza place known for pizza. And we were, we had, it was a big party. We wanted to share food. If you share a pasta like eight ways, you're just gonna yeah. get like two like strands of pasta. Yeah. yeah. So it was a strategic no. It was a strategic refusal. I think I've learned to subdue my strong preferences and accept that when I'm in that sort of situation, anything goes, it's fine. It might not be the way that I would have stra strategically planned the ideal order, but it's better off in the long run to not poo-poo others' <laughs> Not poo-poo -poo others' preferences. Okay, I've poo-pooed in the past, <laughs> and <laughs> it's not a nice thing to do. Okay, I have never... You have poo-pooed. I just <laughs> brought up a specific example of from hey, recent no. memory where you poo-pooed. Whenever I'm dining with somebody and it's like, you suggest something and it's like, oh, I don't really like that sort of thing. I'm always like, are you sure? Have you tried? <laughs> Could you try again, please? I feel like when I go out and eat with just friends, the only thing I would say is that if it's something that I can make for them, I would say to opt for something else. Cause I would mm -hmm. be like, oh, let's try something new together. And then if you want this, I can make it for you. So then we can all learn something new together. I think that's the one thing yeah. that is consistent throughout every outing I have. I think my biggest pet peeve is when people are not down to share, <laughs> which I always find weird. It's like, but we're sharing. Mm. This is what we're doing. I'm gonna taste everything that's on this table. You can't hide from me. <laughs> mm. It's like depending on what your flavor profile is yeah. and what you like to eat and the people you're with constantly. Like I would say my friends now, they have a stronger love for bread. Mm, really? You know? Yeah. It's a nice positive impact. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, you can't bring that bread around Inca. This, we need, <laughs> we're going to her place. We need nicer bread than this. Another realistic version of this is some of my friends think that I have stronger preferences mm. than I actually do. I agree. Or they're like, Andrew must know where to eat. It's actually like, oh no, I actually, I don't eat out that much. Yeah. Like I'm not like constantly chasing down the new restaurant yes. openings and that sort of thing. You know, we're not like food journalists who write for magazines and they have like a budget to go and try all the new restaurants. So I think people think I'm more picky than I actually am. Yeah. But really I'm just down to have a good time and eat, you know, whatever. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I think people associate like us cooking a lot with just like, oh, you have a very specific preference because yeah. you know food. And the truth is we don't know everything no. about food. You know, we're, we're constantly learning. So we are very down to go wherever. Has Worth It Ended by Jacob Braun 63 from Instagram. Nope, uh, we're actually in the process of planning new episodes. I am so curious on what your favorite fruits are. Crying emoji. That's from Me Lovely on Instagram. I actually have three answers. Okay, okay. My personal favorite, raspberry. Okay. But I don't necessarily think it's the best fruit. I think like the ultimate tastiest fruit is peach. 
Okay. And then the fruit that I've been most excited about recently that I didn't used to get that excited about is mango. <sighs> so mango is my favorite fruit as it is. Mm. But my favorite fruit flavors, like if you take this fruit and make it into other things, like a smoothie, a cake or whatever, I have three. <laughs> <laughs> Passion fruit, grapefruit, and guava. I do love grapefruit. Mm. Also strawberry, but God, I love fruit. You know, fruit yeah, is just fruit great. Yeah, fruit is very good. If you like matcha, do you like to experiment with it besides drinking it as a beverage? Oh, That's yeah. from Oblivion Anord on Instagram. I think with tea flavors, it's like an entire world. You know, mm. there's like matcha, hojicha, there's also things like Earl Grey, you know, like I feel like there's in chai. I've made a matcha parfait. I've made a matcha cheesecake. I think I've made matcha ice cream, Ma matcha cake for sure. Like, gosh, because I was obsessed with matcha for a while. I haven't, you know what I haven't done? So I've made a bunch of desserts with matcha, but I'm wondering if there's something savory we can do with it. I've always wondered about like a chamomile chicken. It sounds like it could be a thing, right? Uh -huh. I thought of this one time like six years ago and every once in a while it'd be like, I wonder if everyone's made like a chamomile savory food. What is a traditionally savory ingredient that you feel works surprisingly well in sweet dishes? What is a traditionally sweet ingredient that works surprisingly well in savory dishes? My dogs are really cool on YouTube. That's the username. Just the first savory ingredient comes to mind. I honestly think soy sauce and miso are so great in so many sweet things. They're very easy to add into desserts and they just add a little bit more of that umami flavor that, you know, salt alone can't give to the dish. This might not count because it is used so frequently, but coffee is technically not a sweet flavor, mm -hmm. but it does set off a dessert so nicely because of that bitter aspect. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of desserts I like have some bitter component to it. Favorite thing about a restaurant that isn't the food or drinks? Let's talk vibes, ambiance, architecture. And this question comes from Blues and Grays on Instagram. I mean, the thing that'll get me talking is a great bathroom. True. Yeah. Very true. Plating, I think, is also a big thing for me. I enjoy making things look visual, visually aesthetic. Um, yeah. So I think for me, I learn a lot when I go out and eat at different places. This question reminds me of the last location in the Worth It Sauce episode. It's this restaurant called Pajoli, and they had the most beautiful wallpaper. And I was looking at this wallpaper, and I thought, surely this isn't the wallpaper I'm thinking of. And I started talking to the chef, and he was like, oh, it's this hand-painted wallpaper from France. And I was like, holy crap, I follow this Instagram account of this hand-painted wallpaper in France that I just like, my friend randomly showed to me one day. And it's just wow. like the most beautiful wallpaper. If you go into a restaurant and know that they're being very intentional about certain mm -hmm. things, I think that speaks a lot about the establishment and that makes a huge difference. Last question. Who would win in a sword fight between everyone who works for About to Eat by Fandom- Fandomenon? Fandomenon on Instagram. I think it depends on the type of sword. <laughs> Who would win with a butter knife? A butter knife? I think you. Thank you. I think so too. <laughs> you sort of have this crazed excitement when you finally get the thing in your hands and you're like, I've seen it before with just like a baguette. <laughs> and just like replace that with a sword and it's like, it's game over. Wow, thank you. That's a compliment. I'll take it. Thank you everyone. Well, that's been our Q&A. Thanks to everybody who submitted a question. If we didn't get to yours, probably wasn't interesting enough. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, no. What is going on today? I'm just kidding. We only have so much time here, but we're gonna be doing more of these in the future. So save your questions, think of new ones. We really appreciate it. But otherwise, thanks for watching. Thank you, bye.